in our Peaceful Valley pasture looking at some of our weeds and what the function of a dead weed would be. <laughs> it's not actually a dead weed, it's a perennial weed. Um, but I actually pulled up the roots and I see that, wow, even though this appears like it's not alive, it is actually feeding earthworms. There's earthworms around the root all nestled in with these roots um, that are feeding off of these root sugars as the roots are breaking down um, as this plant is feeling the sunshine and producing more exudates there's a lot of different conditions here around this root of microbes the earthworms eat the bacteria and they eat a lot of bacteria a day and so as the bacteria are growing um, the earthworms are eating them and so it's really supporting from the base of the microbial food chain, the bacteria, the sugars break down, and all the way to the top of the microbial and into the macroscopic world, the earthworms. Um, there's a lot of different groups of organisms in the soil food web, but bacteria and earthworms are just one of them, and the earthworms happen to eat the bacteria, but there are a lot of other predators, protozoa, amoeba, um, that are also thriving in and even nematodes that are positive nematodes we we hear the word nematode but a nematode is like a microscopic worm and some of them are very beneficial and they are the most um, they cycle the most nutrients to plant per organism um, or by biomass they are responsible you know exponentially more than a single bacterium or a single nanogram of bacteria um, but basically we hear the word nematode oftentimes and we associate them with root feeding nematodes that actually predate plants and eat the roots of plants but there are all different types of nematodes um, that are microscopic worms that are very different than these earthworms but that also feed off the bacteria they're bacterial feeding nematodes there are fungal feeding nematodes there are um, predatory nematodes that eat other nematodes and then there's nematodes that are called switchers that will eat fungi but if there are not enough good fungi in your soil they will eat the roots of your plants and then there are the classes of nematodes that we call the root feeding nematodes that basically will eat the root of your plant and cause the plants to die so that's another reason why we want to support all levels of the food chain so that we don't just have a niche for some of these pathogens or um, damaging type of organisms like the root feeding nematodes if there is a lack of diversity of the good guys the bad guys will survive and they will thrive and they will dominate the whole ecosystem and if there's diversity that we're feeding above and below ground there's going to be a diversity of foods supporting at different times of year different soil temperatures the whole soil food web growth from what i can see in the microscope to what you can see with your eyes and you can feel that if you feel this the soil is being aggregated. You see these clumps that are glued together. It's the microbes that produce the glues as a byproduct of their metabolism that create aggregates of soil that then create pockets of air spaces for roots and for other microbes and oxygen to travel down into the soil. And so we want soil to be porous and have air spaces but we also don't want it to just collapse flat. We want it to be aggregated. So we want these glues, these microbial glues, holding it together in chunks. And that way it doesn't flatten out and compact. And if we're supporting the microbial food chain, we will get um, flocculated clay that becomes fluffy and turns at right angles. We won't have as much compaction and we'll have a healthier system, ecosystem. So really, even a weed in our systems we do have weeds in our pasture systems. We do not spray an herbicide because we look to what is the weed telling us um, and it's telling us that, you know, we weren't quite at, in this part of the field, we were selecting for more of the bushy type weeds and we weren't selecting for grasses. And so now you can see that the animals have tromped around this weed. They actually had knocked it down. They hadn't killed it because its root system is still alive. It's a perennial weed but they've deposited manure, which will make it more bacterial. And so the soil's becoming more bacterial and less fungal. And so these bushy type weeds um, will become less and less. And the grasses are germinating even out of the manure pile next to it. So we're selecting more for grass 
and less for weeds. And we're not looking for a quick fix. If you're looking for um, one big hammer to, you know, an herbicide to come in and knock out all your weeds, it's not going to happen. It might work temporarily, but you're going to hurt your grasses. You're going to hurt your soil. Your soil is going to compact because that herbicide is a salt base. Um, all of the herbicides I pretty much know of are salt base, heavy salts. And when you salt the soil, you kill the natural microbes that are creating the fluffiness in the soil and the soil just flattens and compacts. And then you get more weeds because we talked about why weeds come. They come because of compaction. If they're the summer annual weeds, if they're the bushy type weeds like blackberry and trees in your field, then you're too fungal. So you have to be within the balance of fungal to bacterial ratio of one to one. And how and when you move the animals through and what kind of litter and food you're putting down and who you're feeding in the soil with what kind of foods at what time of the year and if you're leaving that carbon on the soil so that those microbes don't dry out and freeze or cake in the heat of the summer or freeze in the winter, if you have that nice carbon blanket, you're going to make sure they stay alive year round. So basically, um, what we do as managers will greatly affect um, whether we have weeds in our system. And that one big hammer, that quick shot that you're trying to achieve a weed-free pasture, is just not going to work.